Numerous Taiwanese businesses have departed from Qinshan, Suzhou, a top 100 county in China, resulting in economic downturn and a housing market collapse. On May 7th, the Qinshan government issued a notice condemning two real estate projects, Dream Moon Garden and Upper Garden, for unauthorized substantial price reductions of 30% for 30 units during the May 1st sales event. Upon further examination, it emerged that the renowned property firm Vank was behind the price cuts, suggesting that even Vank's properties are struggling to sell and the entire Quinshan housing market is in distress. April's latest data reveals that the number of property transactions in Quinshan amounted to 1,610, a decline of 977 units or 60% compared to March. Confronted with April's sharp drop in transaction volume, the local government could no longer tolerate the situation and directly requested Vank to refrain from selling at reduced prices. Developers resort to price reductions due to intense market competition. Without such cuts, their products may prove difficult to sell. This accurately mirrors the circumstances in major cities throughout China. The country's 30 key cities contribute to more than 50% of China's fiscal revenue. According to the official data released for April, the residential sales area in these cities, with the exception of Beijing, Shenzhen and Chengdu, have experienced month-on-month declines, often significantly. In over half of these 30 key cities, residential sales areas have dropped by more than 30%. Cities such as Qingdao, Dalian, Nanning, Kunming and Changchun have experienced declines nearing 50%, with Suzhou suffering the most severe drop at 77%. The real estate market situation is indeed concerning. China is currently grappling with not only a stagnant real estate market, but also a myriad of products that are facing considerable difficulty in sales, resulting in severe inventory backlogs. One such example is the Honor Huawei smartphones, with a staggering 10 million units remaining unsold and languishing in warehouses. Even BYD cars have been found stored on the second floor of unfinished buildings, unable to find buyers for extended periods. The root cause of this mounting inventory backlog can be traced to the early stages of the market downturn. Many companies opted against laying off workers due to the challenges in selling products, choosing instead to reduce working hours. This decision led to a continued production, albeit a decreased output, causing inventory to accumulate steadily. As the inventory backlog intensifies, companies are ultimately forced to implement layoffs to cope with the situation. Recent news on May 6 revealed that the sales of liquor traditionally consumed by civil servants are facing adversity, indicating that salary cuts are in progress. Guojiao, a renowned Chinese liquor brand, reported a sudden halt in the growth trend of its financial data in 2013, accompanied by a year-on-year decline and a 42.8% decrease in revenue. A top-tier brand in the white liquor industry, Neitan Liquor, has experienced a precipitous decline, with its net profit plummeting by 42.38%. According to the first quarter report, Guodiao has amassed substantial inventory since 2021. Production amounted to 1,281 tons in 2021, with sales reaching only 966 tons, translating to over 300 tons of unsold Guodiao liquor. In 2022, the inventory situation worsened, with production at 1,580 tonnes and sales at a mere 1,147 tonnes. As a result, the current inventory of Guodiao liquor stands at over 1,000 tonnes. Following this trajectory, liquor brands such as Guodiao and Maotai could potentially suspend production for an entire year, as consumers in China and around the world would be unable to deplete these stocks. Presently, dealers are confronting a severe inventory backlog across various sectors, including goods, housing, automobiles and liquor. This widespread issue is leading to economic stagnation, exasperating the already dire predicament of the Chinese economy. China's economy is grappling with formidable challenges. Previously, the government had placed great hope in the technological transformation, but now, with that avenue no longer feasible, the focus has shifted back to the real economy, including low-end industries such as catering and street vending. During the first meeting of the 20th Central Finance and Economics Committee on May 6, President Xi Jinping called for an acceleration of efforts to create a modern industrial system buttressed by the real economy. 
the renewed emphasis on the importance of the real economy after decades of reform and opening up in China signals that it is confronting grave difficulties. As of late, the government has ardently endorsed activities like barbecuing and street vending, which have strong ties to the real economy and employment. As foreign capital takes flight, a failure to rejuvenate the real economy would precipitate significant problems in China's employment landscape. A lack of employment opportunities not only impairs people's quality of life, but also exasperates public security issues. Consequently, turning to the real economy to tackle employment challenges has become an imperative for the Chinese government. Concerning public security, the current economic downturn in China has already triggered an alarming spike in crime rates, exhibiting exponential growth and prompting social disarray. The Supreme People's Procuratorate recently unveiled first quarter data, which revealed that 10,923 individuals were approved for arrest on fraud charges. This figure pertains only to those approved for arrest and does not include those already detained. Among all charges, fraud crimes related to the economy rank second. It is noteworthy that this data emerged even as efforts were made to minimize prosecutions and detentions when possible. Nevertheless, the number of arrests has exceeded 10,000, underscoring the urgency for the Chinese government to address the fundamental issues plaguing the real economy and employment in order to stabilize social order. Astonishingly, due to the backlog of numerous cases, the number of individuals prosecuted in court during the first quarter reached 18,146, surpassing the total arrests this year. To provide context, let us briefly examine China's judicial process: detention, arrest, prosecution, and ultimately court trial. In a single quarter, over 18,000 individuals were prosecuted, with fraud cases alone ranking fifth. The quantity of cases in other high-ranking categories is undoubtedly even more substantial. It can be estimated that Chinese courts must process at least 100,000 cases per quarter, with each province handling over 1,000 cases per month. In light of these circumstances, illegal activities and crimes are ubiquitous, and their numbers are soaring at an alarming rate. China's economy is currently grappling with a severe crisis as fraudulent activities proliferate throughout the nation. A search on the People's Court website reveals a concerning number of cases involving local governments and branches of the industrial and commercial bank, which have become dishonest debtors or so-called deadbeats. This underscores the widespread nature of fraudulent crimes in the country. Fraud in China is continually evolving, with traditional forms such as financial fraud and predatory lending scams remaining prevalent. At the same time, new methods related to elder care, health insurance, and collectibles are emerging. These schemes often lurk within sectors such as elder care services, investment in elder care projects, and the sale of elder care products. The Supreme People's Procuratorate has identified that fraud rings operate with tight organizational structures, clear divisions of labor, strict hierarchical management, and independent systems. Some groups even establish legitimate companies, renting high-end office spaces as a cover, while setting up multiple departments and positions dedicated to committing fraud. As criminal methods become increasingly sophisticated and covert, fraudulent crimes have gradually shifted from solely using telephones to employing the internet, involving artificial intelligence and big data analysis. This has led to a higher number of victims, low crime costs, easy replication, and extremely high case handling costs, making it challenging for law enforcement to keep up with the pace of criminal activity. In truth. As China confronts economic decline, even university students who have diligently studied at prestigious institutions like Hengshui High School may be driven to desperate measures and join fraud rings due to financial hardships. Some students even took their college entrance exams while connected to IV drips. Burdened by substantial debts, other citizens might also be tempted into criminal activities. A popular online saying encapsulates the situation. Zhang Xianzhong has returned. Li Zicheng has returned, and the laid-off civil servants of the Yellow Turban Army have all returned. This insinuates that China is facing a significant disaster rather than an ordinary catastrophe. The underlying cause is the nation's profound economic recession, which is a consequence of the Chinese government's unfavorable economic and diplomatic policies. 